Our clothes sizing system can be hugely inconsistent and deeply frustrating. It's particularly bad in women's fashion, where a dress size that fits you perfectly well in one shop can be really quite wide of the mark in another. But it wasn't always meant to be like this. 60 years ago, the first large-scale survey of British women's body sizes tried to overhaul the dress size system by getting the measure of 5,000 women. I find that clothes are always much too big in the hips and in the bust. It was the brainchild of London designer Philip Kunick. I'm meeting his son, Norman. What would it be like as a customer in the, the late 40s, the early 50s? It was gradually coming out of the cocoon of the home industry and going into the high street shops. But everyone had their own codes for sizing. I've got a couple of old things here. There is a label on it to fit OS. OS. From a 95 to a 105 centimetre. This, oh, this has got a, a WX. Well, look at that. These are both about the same size, Similar. aren't they? You've got three different sizes there for two garments that are both the same size. Cunit was convinced we needed a simple set of standard sizes that actually fit real women. But to create it, he needed to find out what thousands of them measured, and he couldn't do it alone. June McAfee was one of Cunic's measurers. Her daughter, Sarah Pearson, still has her scrapbooks. So, so this is your mum? Um, this, this lady this here. This lady here doing the yeah. measuring? She worked for Norman's father. Um, she'd started as a machinist and she'd worked her way up. So your mother would have had a chart like that and she would be measuring all these various measurements. Bust arc anterior. Cervical to front waist. Bite, bitro, chantric, width. So much more of an involved process than I think I had ever expected. Koenig gathered 200,000 individual measurements and published them to huge press attention in 1957, hiring models to represent the average body shapes he'd discovered. Miss Short, Mrs Average, Miss Medium and Miss Tall, modelled by June herself. So this is your mother? Yes, but <laughs> Miss Tall was, was my mum, yeah. Koenig calculated that a mind-boggling 126 different sizes would be needed to fit most women, but this was impractical for the trade. The system was simplified to just a handful of standard sizes. And they were named after a string of arbitrary numbers, the ones we know today. So why, despite Koenig's groundbreaking research, is British sizing still so inconsistent? That's an extremely good question. It's a guideline, it's not a law. The retailers were quite content with making a living as they were going. Some of them were not willing to change from the old systems to the new system. But Koenig's dream of better fitting fashion lives on at the University of Manchester. Body scanning expert Dr Simeon Gill believes we need to move away from standard dress sizes and more towards bespoke clothing fitted to our unique shapes. So, Simeon, rather than using tape measures as they were doing back in 1957, what are you using now? What we use here is a body scanner using 14 infrared sensors and they project infrared light onto the body surface as a pattern which is photographed and then used to render the curvature of the body to a virtual person. Simeon and his team run open scanning days so anyone can access their precise measurements. And I'm going to give it a go. Visually you've got indications of posture, and relationships of body parts to one another, and all the measurements that you would need for understanding sizing. According to Simeon's data, in the 1950s survey, I'd have been classed a medium statue woman with a medium bust. But could standard sizes be a thing of the past? I'd like to be in a position where we could use this type of technology to produce patterns which represent specific dimensions of individuals. Then we can help the industry move towards mass customization and made to measure. It's the way forward.